In this uh, module, we will uh, try to get an understanding of a uh, refrigeration system, um, look at its uh, key function, and then also we will examine the characteristics of uh, different refrigerants. The main function of a refrigeration system is to transfer heat uh, from a cooling chamber uh, to another location where that heat can be easily discarded. Now this function is common uh, to every type of refrigeration system, uh, whether you are looking at a home refrigerator or a large uh, refrigerated warehouse. Now this transfer of heat is uh, accomplished by using a refrigerant. Now, refrigerant is a chemical substance. We can actually uh, consider refrigerant to be uh, similar to water. As you know, water uh, can change its state from uh, uh, liquid to gas. So the same thing with the refrigerant. Uh, however, unlike water, a refrigerant has a much lower boiling point. As you know, water boils at 100 degrees C. But in case of a refrigerant, for example, uh, ammonia, uh, it boils at minus 33.3 degrees C at atmospheric pressure. So similar to water, uh, ammonia also needs heat of vaporization to change its state from liquid to vapor. And it discharges heat uh, when those vapors are condensed back to liquid. We can change the boiling point of ammonia by changing its pressure. Uh, for example, we can have ammonia boil at 0 degrees C at 428.5 kilopascals. So this way, uh, by adjusting the pressure, we can have refrigerants uh, boiling at different temperatures and thus accomplish desired temperatures in our cooling chamber. Let's uh, look at how we select a refrigerant and uh, we can do that by looking at the characteristics of a refrigerant. Now first, we want the refrigerant to have high latent heat of vaporization so that a small amount of refrigerant, when it vaporizes, it should be able to absorb large amount of heat. Uh, so in this way, we will need small quantities of refrigerant to accomplish uh, the uh, cooling process. We want to avoid excessively high condensing pressure for a refrigerant. Uh, if the condensing pressures are too high, that means that you will need to run the refrigeration system at high pressures. Uh, that means the wear and tear on the equipment will be much more uh, and uh, therefore the cost will be higher. Uh, we want the freezing temperature of the refrigerant to be below the evaporating temperature. Now as we will see later on, in a refrigeration cycle, the state of the refrigerant varies from liquid to vapor and then it is turned back into liquid uh, and it flows within the refrigeration system. Now if that refrigerant turns into a solid, then we will have a problem because then the refrigerant will not be able to flow inside the uh, pipeline. So we do not want the refrigerant to freeze at temperatures that we are trying to accomplish uh, in our cooling chamber. It should have a sufficiently high critical temperature. Now a critical temperature is a, a temperature where chemical substance may get into an unstable state. Uh, we certainly do not want that so the refrigerant should have a fairly high critical temperature a temperature that we will never reach in the refrigeration system. Uh, the refrigerant must be non-toxic because we are looking at uh, food applications. Uh, it should be non-corrosive uh, to the equipment, uh, the pipeline and so on, and it should be chemically stable. Now we will talk about the stability part in, in a short time, but we do not want the uh, uh, refrigerant to, to be unstable uh, chemical. It should be easy to detect leaks since uh, the refrigerant will be, since the pressure of the refrigerant will be raised at some point in the refrigeration system, if it begins to leak from the system, we should be able to easily detect it. And finally, the uh, cost of the refrigerant should be low since uh, uh, refrigerant will be required throughout the life of the uh, refrigeration system. Now, some of the uh, 
common refrigerants are uh, ammonia. There is a uh, uh, designation uh, that is provided for different refrigerants by uh, ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers. The nomenclature they use is, uh, begins with R and then a number. So uh, ammonia is uh, R717. And as you know, the chemical formula for ammonia is NH3. Another refrigerant is uh, Freon, Freon 12, and the designation is R12. The chemical formula is CCL2F2. It's a dichloro difluoromethane. Freon 12 was used uh, around the globe for a number of years. However, its use has now been banned uh, because of the problems that uh, Freon causes with the atmosphere. The replacement for uh, Freon 12 is uh, HFC 134A, also designated as R134A. Chemical formula CH2FCF3, it's 1112 tetrafluoroethane. Now, chlorofluorocarbons, also called CFCs, are extremely stable. And when a refrigerant is extremely stable, then it may have a long life in the atmosphere uh, and may even migrate into upper atmospheres over time where the uh, chlorine molecule will react with ozone and thus depleting ozone concentration. Uh, and of course ozone is important in the upper atmosphere because it, it blocks the uh, ultraviolet rays reaching the Earth's surface. So according to the Montreal Protocol in 1987, a time was set for all nations to phase out the use of uh, CFCs uh, so that we do not uh, cause damage to the uh, ozone layer. So the replacement for uh, Freon-12 uh, was the HFC-134A refrigerant uh, that we will look in more detail in some of the following modules.